So welcome everyone to the Streamzy community call of 19th October 2023. The first thing on the agenda is mostly just announcement that Streamzy 38038 is out. So you know, if you want, you can upgrade. Uh, you can also check our YouTube channel for the what's new video and uh, release notes and so on. And the next item on the agenda are the PRs and issues. Uh, I think I linked two issues here. This was the, or two PRs, this was the first one. I don't know what others thought about it, but I'm not sure we want to have like enabling or disabling the feature gate. There are many different ways how to do it, depending how you install Streamzy with Helm chart, with operator hub and so on. And I'm not sure the readme should really cover that, but if then it should probably cover more of them or I don't know, this didn't seem to be that useful because we have these things covered in the documentation. What do others think? So I agree because we already had in the past discussion with Paul about, uh, you know, don't have a specific instruction of uh, how, for example, you, uh, you have to update or edit a custom resource because you can do that in different ways uh, on the command line if you are using the UI or things like that. So taking into account that, I would say that, uh, yeah, uh, we should not have a specific instructions because the list will be longer than just this. Can we just link to the docs instead from here? Yeah, yeah I think that's a suitable option, yeah. Yeah. I recently had a go with no pools and craft, um, not remembering how to set the specific um, feature flags and I found the docs covered it pretty well. Um, so I think linking to the docs would be sufficient. I think these had some DCO issues as well. No DCO was fine. Okay, so like this. Oh. We actually didn't get any reply since it was open. So let's see if person comes back. Okay, another one. Mark, I see you joined. I wondered what's the latest plan for this yeah um, it doesn't seem like there is interest uh, from this particular user who contributed the feature um i pinged on the issue i don't know if we have any other way to ask community if anyone is interested i mean in principle the feature might be useful to someone but it doesn't seem like anyone will use it very soon or is interested in it right now. We don't plan to use it in uh, the operators. 
Um, somehow I would prefer not to have a feature that nobody is using. <laughs> well, there was now no reply on that for a very long time. So I think we should close it then. Yeah, one option is to close it. And if there is interest, uh, again, at some point in time, we can simply reopen and bring it to completion. Okay, so if nobody disagrees, let's close it. Uh, then someone edit this PR or, or link or? That was me. Okay. Um, now that 038 is out, because I think we were holding off on this one just because we didn't want to put it in close to release. Um, I just wanted to um, draw attention that I think Tina and I have addressed all of the comments so far on this PR, but um, I guess just a call for anyone who's interested to have a look and give it a review. Okay. Who do we want to review? Paulo. Bentley and anyone else can add themselves as well. Okay, any other PRs or issues to discuss? Um, I spoke to Sam earlier. He's not able to come to the meeting today, but he wanted to get um, some more eyes on the quota plugin PR. Paolo, is that something you can have a look at? Or is there some specific question, Tom, or just another review? No, I just, I just think it's just getting it over the line and merged, really. So, Paolo, do you think you can have a look? Yeah. OK. Okay, any other PR so issues? If not, proposals are the next point on the agenda. I don't think we have any new proposals and I don't have anything specific to raise, but just to know that several of the craft proposals were merged last week. I don't know if anyone else has anything to raise around proposals. Now, just saying that uh, maybe at some point I will uh, open a PR to update the Zookeeper to Graft migration proposal because while working on the implementation, uh, I kind of simplified state machine, removing one state there, applying a little, some, some changes around. So I will open a PR on this. I'm just uh, first validating uh, that it's going to work somehow in my uh, implementation before opening. So what's the expectation that it goes through the approval as a new PR would get or as a new uh, proposal or? 
Oh, well, uh, not this new proposal, this kind of update on the current one. Yeah, but do you expect the same voting or? Mm, good question. Because I don't think we in general do that unless you want to go through the vote again with the changes. Yeah, the only thing that I don't like is having a proposal merged and then uh, the implementation, you know, is different from the proposal. So for this reason, I was, uh, uh, I wanted to, to open the PR. Uh, I would say we have around 61 of those. Well, not 61 because the last few are not yet merged, but 58. It's always something what's slightly different than was in the proposal and so on. And even if it isn't at the time of implementation, it anyway changes months later, two months later, and so on. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, because right now the code is not out there. Uh, so we don't have the implementation merged and uh, written into the stone somehow. I would like at least uh, the proposal mirroring the implementation when uh, I will open the PR for the implementation. So not sure if has to go through the voting, maybe we can go through the voting. Uh, hopefully it will not be, of course, because it's not a big change. So maybe, yeah, people will take a look and approve somehow. Uh, So I don't remember if we did something like this in the past. So we just stay with implementation different from the proposal or having an update on the proposal or a new one. I think normally we update only the timelines and things like that to correspond to the reality. What do you mean by update the timeline? Well, when you have the feature gate and you have the schedule of how it's supposed to be. Promoted. Ah, okay, okay. So this is the only use case where this kind of things happen. So I guess you should think about it. Okay. Anyone has anything else to proposals or to this discussion? Okay, then the next point on the agenda is the issue triage. So, first one is this thing around the topic operator. Tom, I think last time we were not really sure what your comment exactly meant and suggested. Three weeks is a long time, isn't it? I can't remember writing this at all. Give me a moment. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm saying we could, we could make it safer by using one or possibly both, but that seems like a little bit like overkill of those IDs in the status and checking it, um, Could or should? I 
I mean, I guess we will not go back and change some status fields in the bidirectional topic operator, which I guess no. this is talking about. So I guess the question is, should we change it to some enhancement for the unidirectional topic operator or? Yes, let's do that. So should we mark it as a needs proposal and have the proposal discuss how and what should be done? Yeah, I guess it is worth writing up something just to explain exactly what it would do. So I guess this would make sense. More detail rather than mode detail, but yes. Okay, so we mark it as enhancement means proposal and help wanted, I guess. Yeah. And we should, I guess, rename it. So what about about something like this do you think that kind of covers it yeah seems reasonable okay great so the next one is about enabling some new option for the Kafka exporter. To not show all the all the offsets even for the inactive clients. I'm not sure how that's useful when, when your client stops the offset like disappears, but I think in general it's probably a reasonable requirement, so maybe we should keep it. But, so isn't it something for Kafka exporter? So, I mean... Kafka exporter supports it as far as I know. But we don't support configuring this option. Ah, okay, sorry. I was, uh, okay, I was misleading. Or, or, or that is at least my understanding. Because I know that we actually I, 
I think that's actually something we didn't like in one of the versions when it was added and the default was different. Uh, flex. Yeah, from the, yeah, on the readme. This, this one. Be, yeah, it seems to be configurable on Kafka exporter already. So I think this makes sense as an announcement. Yep. But I would also say it needs help. Yeah. Could be a good start, I was thinking. I don't know, do you think so? Yeah, it's about configuring something. It should not be a, I don't know, so. I should probably add there that you follow it will be a good start and it will help whoever wants to work on this. <laughs> Luckily it's recorded and I have a good memory. Yeah. Anyway, it should not be complex logic to add, right? It's about configuration. Okay, the next issue is... So I think this is the old informer stack issue because that's with old version. So I think we should close it. And this guy who said that he's seeing the same, he opened another issue so we can ignore it. Or? Yeah. Remembering four digits. Impossible task. And this is the issue which the guy opened. And despite being told twice, didn't provide it any configurations, any locks, anything. So I think all we can do here is tell him to provide logs to actually understand whether it is the same issue or not, because nobody can tell that from the short snippet provided there. So I guess we should say just something like this and leave it for next time. Take silence as agreement. Uh, what about this one? Anyone has any thoughts? Well, you can enable exactly once in Mirror Maker uh, since 3.5. So I wonder if it would help here. But well, it's only exactly once for the source connector, but that seems to be the issue here.
So I mean, I've not read the issue. Maybe there's you know, maybe there's a configuration mistake or there's something happening. But uh, if the user just complains that uh, yeah, some message got duplicated uh, with the default setup, uh, that's expected because it's at least once. Yeah, I mean, if you get two messages twice, it seems like just some duplication, right? If you would get yeah. all messages twice, I would say it's some configuration issue. But yeah, it's like I do not see anything obviously wrong in the custom resource shared here. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so it would be good for them to try it and uh, see if that helps. Should we change this to discussion as it doesn't seem to be obvious streams about? Um, yeah, I mean, from, from the, um, the three line paragraph here, it doesn't seem to be a bug, it just seems to be. A... Yeah, I mean, even if it would be, it would not be a streams bug, but Kafka bug. Yes, yeah. Okay, so let's convert it to discussion. So next issue is one I opened. It's mostly just the tracker for the tiered storage support and what things need to be discussed and so on. I guess we take that and it anyway already says that it needs that proposal should be written to discuss the details yes for me uh, i was thinking about it yesterday and uh, um, um so uh, have you tried to get it because yesterday you said oh this would not work because um uh, it requires the Kafka client to, to write bugs metadata into the topic. Uh, have you tried to run it and, uh, and, and see it fail? It can work, but it can not really work securely. Like I didn't use the Ivan S3 connector or plugin. I used only the one built in, which just stores the data in the separate directory. You can configure it if you want to play with it. You basically create an anonymous listener. You make sure that the user anonymous has the right to do what it needs to do. Uh, in my case, I simply just made it super user. And then it works fine out of the box, basically with the quick start from, from the Kafka documentation. So it's not like you can't play with it, but obviously you can't tell someone to use it in production the way that they set up some anonymous uh, listener that... and then kind of route the metadata for the tier storage through it. Because I'm, I'm wondering if it may, if it could work um even with secure listener because of the way it because uh, you don't specify the um uh, the configuration you mean the... if it if it can read the configuration from the kafka config yeah yeah i tried that it doesn't if you configure it to use the replication listener it basically gives you all kind of ssl errors in our case because we use mtls there and it doesn't work all right, because I would expect um, 
it work kind of the same way as uh, like uh, uh, the broker talking to the controller that's on the same you know uh, machine basically um, so I can open an issue in Kafka or or share more details or whatever if someone wants uh, but I try to point it to the replication listener and it didn't work. Okay. So I don't know. <sighs> so one thing to keep in mind is I don't know, maybe you or Luke know if that was supposed to work that way. But for example, one thing to keep in mind is that if I tell it to use the replication listener, then it's probably quite easy to find out that it's TLS listener. But because of how the listeners are configured, there's a lot of the details around the SSL configuration is hidden in the listener configurations because they differ from listener to listener. So it would actually need to understand that this is the listener I should use, then this is the prefix, and then these are the configurations, for example. Well, I believe it's supposed to be doing that. To, you give the listener name, it finds all the details about that listener and they use those configs. So. Um, would be good to see, um, so when you run it and it fails, to see what configuration the Kafka client uh, adds, basically what it fetched. Because uh, uh, I, I think it should work. Uh, yeah, I think so. But yeah, like Jakub said, uh, you can share any information to us. We can take a look. I think with, uh, with what you said to me, sounds like a bug in Kafka. Okay, so let's split into two things. So we want to to use this issue, and it needs still needs the proposal. And another one is that. that you think the and I can try to reproduce it again and share the logs and so on with you Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and we remove the needs triage label. Okay. So next one, I believe Federico said he's already looking into it. So that's some bug in the unidirectional topic operator where when in the Kafka topic spec, uh, when the partitions and replicas fields are missing, then it runs into all kinds of errors inside when it tries to use them. So I think, yeah, we just keep it and Federico looks into it.
So we can remove the needs triage, and I guess we don't want to set help wanted if Federico is already looking into it. And the last one was actually just opened a few minutes before, so I have no idea what it is about. I guess a custom resource should be shared by the user. So to be honest, uh, I, <clears throat> it's a long time that I don't apply these alerts uh, when deploying with Prometheus. So it seems that in our Prometheus rules, we have this uh, no message for too long alert, which is a warning. So actually, if you are not using a topic for 10 minutes, it's raising this alert. I don't remember from where this alert is coming. Well, probably from the example rules. So I don't know. So it seems not to be a bug, to be honest. If you are not using the topic, <sighs> this is what happens, right? Well, it's examples, right? So. Yeah, so it's even example. He can just remove the rule if it's bothered by the rule. He can just, I don't know, increase the timeout if he needs this rule. Otherwise, it can be just removed. But I don't see that as a bug. Okay, so what do we say? That... Uh... Yeah, that the rules that we have here are just examples and uh, it sounds not to be a bug. If he doesn't need that rule, he can just remove the rule from the YAML before uh, using it. So like this. Yes. And we close it. Yeah. It's fine with me. Okay. Uh, anyone wants to triage any more issues? Just on that last bug, I wonder if we could tweak the default rule to exclude um, internal topics, maybe? Because he seems to be complaining about um, the cruise control topics and, and, and the title is um, overbuilt in topics. So actually the rule is excluding the consumer topics as well. I was taking a look right now. Where it's excluding the consumer offsets, it's not excluding some of the other regular topics. Collection topic, cruise control topics. You know. But I still don't know if that's. Basically, that's what the person I... says expects behavior, he expects all the internal topics to be excluded? Well, we could do something like this I for would the not necessarily, but is it like if you are creating topics or not creating and, and there are no messages in there, then this would be surely a bug. Or I mean, this would indicate a problem with the topic operator, for example. I have no idea how the cruise control topics work. But like, 
you can't say that every single topic which doesn't get message for 10 minutes that that means some alert right in some cases it might be a reason to alert in some cases it might not be a reason to alert and the same applies to the topic operator so if you are not doing anything with it and not really using it and not creating new topics then yeah maybe it's expected that there are no messages at all but if you are creating some topics all the time then uh, yeah maybe if you get this alert then this means that something wrong is happening in the topic operator so my my point is that it's just weird to exclude this single internal topic um well some of them the stream is the internal one we are moving away from them at least the topic operator case streams for example and anyway, for the risk control, but you can change the name of the topics, right? Like, I don't know what the logic was to exclude the consumer offsets, I assume, because it's a special topic. But I don't think there's anywhere written that these rules have to be used to monitor only your own topics and not the working of the internal components. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with that. My point is just we exclude one of them. That seems a bit random. Maybe it's for historical reason, that was the only internal topic at the time. Well, we don't exclude one of them. We exclude the consumer offsets, which I would argue is not a regular topic like these others, but has a very special purpose and meaning. Yeah, but for me, it's in the same category as a transaction state topic. Yeah, I think nobody was using transactions when they worked on the rules. So are you saying that we should reopen it and we should remove the exclude of the consumer offsets? I either remove it or also exclude transaction. So the Kafka internal topics are included or excluded. And over internal topics, that, that's another discussion, as you said, but at least be consistent in the, in the filter. Yeah, I see your point, Mikkel. You say why excluding this and not the others so let's just remove this exclusion or add all the others but adding all the others i don't think is the right thing even because uh in the log from the user there are a lot of from the quiz control but you I mean, can all the others i think they can be split into multiple categories you know there's a kafka internal topics so this one plus transaction state then you'll have a you know a topic operator in our topics you have cruise control in our topics I'm not sure it makes sense to include all of them, but if we include one of the Kafka, include, let's include all the Kafka in our topics. You know, just yeah. Not. So you want to reopen it and say that we should either exclude no topics or exclude all Kafka internal topics? I think so, yeah. Paolo? Yeah. And I also guess that we have a volunteer from Mikael to do that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want a PR, I can remove uh, the topic in 10 minutes and uh, that would work for me. <laughs> like, no exclusion. Let's monitor all topics. Uh, So is there anything else than the transaction state? Uh, well, in Kafka currently, those are the only two. Um, I mean, till storage introduces a third one, but uh, let, let's not <laughs> let's not uh, think about this one yet. I think maybe we can just add some of them and add some uh, comments about the line saying you, you can add more uh, building topics to include by yourself. It, this is just an example, something like that. 
Yeah, especially but as I, many of them can be renamed by the user, so we don't know the names. Well, I guess you are just saying that we should not exclude anything, and if user wants to exclude something, they should update it. Maybe that's the simplest. <laughs> Okay, so so okay, we want to check the internal ones. We do not want to touch the topic operator who is control topics. So Should be marked as help wanted, or will someone actually look at it? Or yeah, I mean, I'm happy to take a look at it. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so anything more to the triage? If not, then uh, I wanted to propose dropping support for Kubernetes 1.21 and 1.22. The last time we discussed the supported versions uh, was in March, and that's when we dropped Cube 1.19 and 1.20. The last time we did it, we first did a warning and then uh, dropped actual support. So if we want to do the same, we would have a warning in 0.39, I don't know, in December or whatever, when it is released. And it would be actually dropped only next year in the 0.30 release. Does that seem reasonable? It will yes. again allow us to clean up some code, clean some of the old APIs, such as the old ingress API, I think, that ends in 0 in 1.21 and so on. Sounds good to me. Yep. Okay, then another thing we wanted to discuss, which we touched, I don't think Federico is on the call, uh, but we talked about it briefly with Tom yesterday, is the unidirectional topic operator should be promoted to the, or should graduate to the beta state as the feature gate and be enabled by default. And at the time of the proposal, we wanted to see a bit more about how the finalizers work and whether they should be enabled by default or not. So today they are enabled by default and it means that if your topic operator is not running, then they are set on all the topics and you can't just delete the topics without removing the finalizers first. And if we would decide to change this, 
then yeah doing it now before it's enabled for everyone it means kind of a behavior change for all users is probably the last point where we can easily change it so we wanted to raise this if anyone has any opinions and wants to change it or if we should keep it and so on And if I don't hear anyone, then I would take it as nobody has strong feelings about changing it and we should stick with them and have them enabled by default. So going once, going twice. Okay, nobody says anything, so we stick with them. That was quick, I expected more discussion. And the last item on the agenda is Trimzicon. Over to Paolo. Yeah, so just a quick update. Um, the plan is having this conference on May 22, 2024. Uh, it should be named the Streamzicon. Uh, and um, yeah, it seems that we already have a good committee with uh, um, people um, from some external organization. So we are uh, matching some needs that we have for uh, CNCF, uh, even about the diversity and inclusion and things like that. Um, that should be a half day conference so in the afternoon of the day in order to cover even the US time, but with two different tracks. Uh, proposed ones are core feature from StreamZ or integration with other projects and the other one is like operating StreamZ. And uh, yeah, so I think that uh, by the end of this week, today or tomorrow, I'm going to submit the request to CNCF because as I already mentioned we have to submit the request for the organization six months before so um, we are at the edge in order to have that in May uh, and I should then wait for uh, the feedback from CNCF if uh, there are any problems um, to be honest I asked what could be the problems stopping us from organizing this there are not really limits in sense that uh, or constraints in sense that the main one is that uh, the day should not uh, overlap with the uh, other cncf uh, organized event like kubecon or things like that so i check it that there are no events from cncf on that day or on that week or less so yeah i will just submit the request and then i will uh, update uh, when i have got the uh, feedback from cncf if it's accepted or not Okay, anyone, anything else to this? Anyone has any other business? In that case, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining and sticking through the long call, uh, which took almost the full hour. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, 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 everyone.